Today I'll show you the equipment I use for soldering surface mount devices. As some of you know, I recently designed and assembled my own STM32 PCB, and I was able to do that using all the equipment in this video. Keep in mind, this is just what I like to use and what works best for me, but it does go to show that you don't necessarily need thousands worth of equipment to enjoy and appreciate this kind of work. Also, any products that I mention in the video, I'll have links for down in the description below. So. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest challenges with surface mount soldering is just being able to see what you're doing. Components can be so small that it's near enough impossible to do a good job soldering by eye. And that's where this first piece of equipment comes in extremely handy. This is the Andenstar AD07 digital microscope. Special thank you to Banggood who were kind enough to send me one of these to review and use for my own projects. If you solder regularly, you'll know that oftentimes you end up hunched over the desk trying to get a closer look at what you're doing. And long term, that's really gonna destroy your lower back and neck. This digital microscope allows you to solder in a vertical position with good posture. And honestly, for me, as someone who's dealt with back and neck problems, that alone is worth it. The microscope has a 270X magnification, a seven inch display that can also be connected up to an external HDMI device. And it can also record in up to 4K resolution, which is perfect for making YouTube videos. It even has these little adjustable LEDs so that you can properly see what you're doing and get the best video quality. After using and testing this microscope out for the past six weeks, it's honestly hard to imagine SMD soldering without it. I now regard it as one of the best pieces of equipment I own and genuinely I really recommend you get one of these if you haven't already, especially if you do soldering daily or very often. As with all soldering it's really important that you have a decent iron. The one I have here is the Heiko FX888D. It's an excellent mid-range iron that handles anything I throw at it. From my experience with soldering irons the important thing to always look for is the ability to recover temperature quickly. Another thing to consider is some different sized soldering tips. You really just need to find which one is best for you, but the one I like to use is the T18C2, which has an angled two millimeter tip. I also have one of these low cost hot air stations, but it really isn't a necessity. I only tend to use the hot air station when I'm looking to desolder components that have a lot of pins specifically things like microcontrollers. They're also pretty handy for repair work, so replacing HDMI ports, USB ports, that kind of stuff. Again, this hot air station is nothing special. It costs 40 pounds on Amazon, but it does the trick. There are a few other bits and pieces that I like to use to assist my soldering. First up, we have precision anti-static tweezers. These are extremely useful for placing very small components. I bought a set of these tweezers a very long time ago, and they last forever. Next up is flux. Flux is very important for surface mount work, especially when you're dealing with devices that have pins that are very close together. I like to use flux paste, but you can also get liquid flux in the form of a syringe. Personally, I prefer the paste because it tends to last longer, but again, it's up to you. You have a few choices available to you. Another thing you're really going to need is desoldering wick. This stuff is extremely useful for solder removal if you've made a mistake or if you're just looking to remove a component. You just heat it up and the solder gets extracted into the braid and it's kind of satisfying to watch actually. Copper repair wire is also very useful for repairing PCBs. I actually had to use a bit of this on my STM32 PCB after I forgot to add a capacitor to the VCAP pin. It's a temporary solution, but it certainly beats waiting another three weeks for a PCB to be manufactured. Another good tip is to use a fiberglass pen to clean any PCB pads that might have started to oxidize. Depending on the quality of the PCB, this can often happen during shipping. Oxidized pads won't take as well to solder, so it's very important to keep them clean. To clean up a lot of the flux and the mess on the board, I like to use rubbing alcohol and cotton buds. You simply spray some IPA over the board, start cleaning with the cotton bud, and when you're done, you can wipe it off with some paper tissue. If you've never done any soldering before, I highly recommend getting one of these practice kits. Or if you have an old PCB lying around, you can use that. The circuit isn't operational. The idea is just that you practice soldering components so that you can get familiar with all the tools that you're using. I definitely recommend playing around with one of these practice boards 
before you go ahead and try and do anything with your own custom PCBs. As you can see from some of the recorded footage, the microscope really is a game changer. Not only does it assist you in seeing what you're doing, but in the long term it's a lot better for your health as well. So there we go, that's all the equipment I like to use for SMD soldering. As I said, nothing too special in regards to the equipment. The microscope is probably the most expensive item. Through my experience using it, it's certainly worth the investment. Let me know in the comments below what equipment you like to use or if you have any other suggestions for this video. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.